Good day. So let's have this example on how to select a section okay, for the analysis and design of a flexural members. So using 50KS I still select the latest W12 section for the beam which has lateral bracing provided for its compression flange only at its ends. Assume that C sub B is equal to 1.0, use both LRFD and ASD. So we have this uh, beam okay, carrying a uniform uh, live load and a uniform dead load of 29.2 kN per meter and 14.6 kN per meter respectively. So the unbraced length is equal to 6.1 meters. So for its uh, properties, okay, we have Fy is equal to uh, 50 KSI or this is equal to approximately okay, 345 mega. Uh, Pascals. So multiplying 6.895 MPa. Then we have its uh, value of C sub B is equal to 1.0. Its unbraced length, okay, the L sub B is 6.1 meters or uh, 6,100 uh, millimeters. Okay, for this example, since the required section is a double 12 section, I will be trying to use a compact section so you can check, okay, kindly check the previous video how to check if a section is compact or non-compact. Okay, but for this, a W12 by 53 section is a compact uh, section uh, or a compact section. So these are the properties of our uh, trial uh, section. So the W12 by uh, 53. Okay, so first is uh, we need to check uh, which which a uh, zone this uh, section will be? So is it okay, under a uh, zone one, so plastic behavior, a uh, zone two with an, an elastic buckling, and zone three with okay, elastic uh, buckling. So let us uh, compute first okay, for the value of the okay, the value of the L sub P. L sub P is equal to one point seventy six of R Y, then the square root of the modulus of elasticity okay, divided by the value of Fy. So that is from our uh, reference. Okay, the L sub P is 1.76 of Ry, then multiplied by the square root of the modulus of elasticity, I divided by F sub Y. So let's have okay, uh, the value of the L sub P is now equal to 1.76. Uh, okay, what is the value of okay, the radius of gyration with respect to the y axis? Okay, we have that as 63 uh, millimeters. Okay, this is to be multiplied by uh, 63 mm. Then multiplied by, for steel, this is 200,000 megapascals. Then divided by Fy, we have 345 megapascals. So we have the value of L sub P is now equal to, okay, that is uh, 1.76 of Ry, uh, is 63 then multiplied by the square root of 200,000 okay, to be divided by okay, 345. So that is 2,669.68. Okay, 2,669.68 millimeters. So which is uh, obviously, if you are to compare this one, it is uh, less than our unbraced length equal to 6,100 mm. So therefore, okay, we need to check if this section will fall under zone 2 or uh, zone 3. So for us to determine okay, which a zone, we need the value of this okay, L sub R. Okay, so computing for uh, the value of L sub R. Okay, so we'll be needing this uh, equation okay, for the value of the L sub R. So let's have okay, the elements of this uh, equation. Okay, so we need the value of D, okay, the value of C. Okay, uh, the value of C is equal to, okay, the value of C is equal to 1.0 for a, a symmetrical I shaped uh, section. Then for the value of the H sub O, H sub O is basically equal to the dot. So the total depth are okay, less are okay, the thickness of the flange. So we have H sub O is equal to okay, the total depth is equal to 307 millimeters minus the thickness of the flange is a uh, 14.6. Okay, the value of the H sub O is now equal to. 
Okay, we have 307 okay, minus our 14.6. Okay, and that is equal to 292.4 millimeters. So what else we have okay, then? I will be needing the value of the R sub at T S. Or this is the effective radius of aggregation. So R sub T S squared is equal to the square root of the moment of inertia with respect to the y, ax y axis, then the warping constant, that is the C sub W, then to be divided by the section modulus or with respect to or the x axis. That is also from our uh, reference. Okay, that's the square root of i sub y, c sub w, divided by s sub x. Okay, so we are now ready to uh, substitute. So for the value of the r sub ts, okay, this is the r sub ts squared is equal to the square root of i sub y. Okay, we have that as 39.9 times 10 raised to uh, 6. Then the value of the warping constant is equal to 849. 849 times 10 raised to okay, times 10 raised to 9. Then to be divided by the section modulus with respect to the x-axis is 1160. This is times 10 raised to uh, 3. So we have the value of the R sub Ts is now equal to the square root of uh, 39.9. Okay, this is times 10 raised to 6 times 849 times 10 raised to 9. Then to be divided by 1160 times 10 raised to uh, 3. Okay, then square root. Okay, we, we can have it as a uh, 70.83. Uh, so I think okay, the elements of this uh, formula are now I uh, complete. So computing for okay, the value of the L sub R is equal to 1.95. Okay, R, R sub T S is equal to 70.83. Then, modulus of elasticity for steel is 200,000. Okay, then, divided by 0 0.7, our FY is 345 megapascals. And, multiplied by the square root of okay, the J, this is equal to 658 okay, times 10 raised to uh, 3. Then, the value of C is 1.0. Then, to be divided by S of X, we have 1160. This is times 10 raised to uh, 3. Then we have H sub O, this is equal to 292.4. Then multiplied by the square root. And this is the square root of 1 plus I the square root of This is a 1 plus a 6.76. Okay, then multiplied by the quantity, we have 0 0.7 of 345. Okay, then the S of X is 1160. This is times 10 raised to 3. Okay, then H sub O is 292.4. Okay, then all over, okay, the value of uh, the modulus of elasticity, 200,000. Okay, then J, we have 658 times 10 raised to uh, 3. Then the value of C, again, is 1.0. So this quantity is squared. Okay, so we are now ready to compute for okay, the value of the L sub R. So I'll be starting okay, for this uh, term. Okay, so that will be um, 0 0.7 of uh, 345, then multiplied by 1160 times 10 raised to 3. Okay, then multiplied by uh, 292.4. Then divided by uh, 200,000, then the value of J is 658 okay, times 10 raised to 3, then the value of C is uh, 1. Then squared, okay, multiplied by uh, 6.76, uh, then plus 1, okay, then uh, square root. So we have now okay, the value of this uh, term, then okay, answer plus 1, 
I then another square root. I then multiplied by. Alright, so we are now here for this term. Okay, multiplied by the square root of uh, 658 uh, times 10 raised to 3. Then to be divided by 1160 okay, times 10 raised to 3. Then multiplied by 292.4. Okay, then multiplied by uh, 200,000. Okay, then to be divided by 0 0.7 of 345. Okay, then uh, multiplied by 70.83. Uh, okay, then multiplied by 1.95. Uh, so we have that as 8,582.95. So this is, okay, we have 8,582.95 uh, millimeters. So 8582.95 uh, mm. So if we are now to uh, conclude, Okay, so the value of LP is 2,669.68, which is less than L sub B, uh, 6,100. And also, uh, this value is uh, less than our L sub R, 8,582.95 mm. So therefore, uh, this section will fall under uh, zone 2. Okay, so that will be under zone 2. L sub P is less than L sub B, less than or equal to L sub R. So therefore, we can compute okay, the nominal moment okay, using this equation. Okay, again, so that will be our okay, so nominal uh, moment. So for us to compute for the uh, nominal moment, so we need the value of the uh, plastic, plastic moment, that is the M sub P. Which is equal to, uh, we have F sub Y multiplied by the Z sub X. Okay, so we have the plastic moment M sub B is equal to F Y. This is 345 megapascals or uh, newtons per square uh, millimeters. And the value of our uh, Z sub X or the Z sub X is equal to, okay, that is 1280 okay, times 10 raised to uh, 3. So multiplied by uh, 1,280 uh, times 10 raised to uh, 3 uh, cubic uh, millimeters. So we'll be having uh, the value of the plastic uh, moment M sub P is now equal to uh, 345 times uh, 1,280 times 10 raised to 3. And this is equal to, okay, so we can have it as uh, 441.6. Okay, this is times 10 raised to 6 okay, newton millimeter. So we are now uh, ready to uh, substitute. Okay, so we have the value of the uh, nominal moment m sub n is equal to c sub b is assumed to be 1.0. Okay, the, the, the value of the plastic moment is 441.6. This is times 10 raised to uh, 6. Then minus okay, this value is M sub P, we have 441.6 okay, times 10 raised to uh, 6. Then minus okay, 0 0.7. Okay, we have uh, 0 0.7 of FY, that is 345 megapascals. And S sub X, so what is the value of the S sub X? Okay, so S sub X is equal to Okay, 1,160, this is times 10 raised to uh, 3. Then to be multiplied by okay, this uh, ratio, okay, the ratio of L sub B, our unbraced length is 6,100. Then minus okay, the L sub B is 2,669.68. Okay, this is 2,669.68. Uh, 68 then divided by okay, the value of L sub R. What is the L sub R? So L sub R is equal to okay, 8,582.95 minus L sub B. So 2,669.68. Okay, and then uh, this value, 
should be less than or equal to the value of the iplastic uh, moment. Okay, so we are now to okay, compute. So I'll be, I, again, I starting with this uh, proportion or this uh, ratio. Okay, so that will be uh, six. Okay, six thousand one hundred. I minus uh, two thousand six hundred sixty nine point uh, sixty eight. Then divided by LR, this eight five eight two point uh, ninety five minus uh, two thousand six hundred sixty nine point uh, sixty eight. Okay, then to be uh, multiplied by. Okay, we have uh, 441.6, this is times 10 raised to 6, okay, less uh, 0.7 of FY 345, then multiplied by 1160, this is times 10 raised to uh, 3. Okay, then that value should be uh, subtracted from okay, our M sub B. That is uh, 441. A point six times ten raised to six, so less the answer. Then to be divided by a one thousand squared. A for our a nominal moment for to be in a kilonewton a meter. So we have the value of the m sub n. A the nominal moment capacity is equal to a three hundred forty-seven point a ninety-four. So three hundred a forty-seven point a ninety-four. 94 a kilonewton a meter. So if we are to uh, use LRFD, okay, the value of the LRFD uh, or for the uh, value of the ultimate moment. Okay, so we have uh, that is MU is equal to uh, the reduction factor okay, multiplied by uh, the value of M sub N. So we have our ultimate moment M sub U is equal to 0 0.90 multiplied by 347.94 kilonewton a meter. So ultimate moment under LRFD, uh, this, is value, uh, this value multiplied by uh, 0.9. So we have that as 313.14. Uh, 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 so 313.14 kilonewton a meter. Then under ASD, Okay, so we have ASD, that is our allowable moment will be equal to the nominal moment M sub N divided by the factor of uh, safety. So the value of M sub A is equal to 347.94 uh, to be divided by 1.67. Uh, so we have allowable moment is equal to okay, the 347.94. Okay, to be divided by 1.67. So that is 208.35. So 208.35 kilonewton a meter. So we are now to uh, compare these values okay, to the actual uh, moment. Okay, that is the actual ultimate moment carried by the beam. And the allowable moment to be carried by this uh, beam okay, in terms of its or okay, from its uh, loading okay, this live load and the uh, dead load since okay, we are uh, we decide uh, which uh, section to be used okay, the w12 by 53 we need to include the section uh, we need to include the uh, self weight of this uh, section all okay, right so which uh, basically okay, the self weight of this wide flange is a dead load Okay, so for the weight of a W12 by uh, 53, so this uh, 53 is actually uh, the weight of uh, the beam or the section. So it weighs uh, 53 uh, pounds per uh, 53 pounds per uh, foot. So we need to convert this one to a uh, kilonewtons per uh, meter. So for us to uh, determine the total dead load, uh, including the self weight of uh, the section. So we are just to uh, convert. Okay, this is for the uh, self weight of the section of W12 by uh, 53. So we have that as uh, 53 pounds I uh, per foot per foot. Then I uh, we are to multiply this one by I uh, one pound 
is equal to 0 0.0044 uh, 48 kilo and newton. Okay, then multiplied by, uh, this is 3.28 uh, uh, feet is to uh, 1 meter. So this is uh, 53, then multiplied by 0 0.004448. I then multiplied by times uh, 3 point, uh, 28 uh, feet. So we have that as uh, 0 point, uh, 70, uh, 0 point 0.77. Okay, the weight of this uh, beam or the weight of this uh, section is equal to uh, 0 point, uh, 0.77 a okay, kilonewton per uh, meter. So let us uh, determine the total uh, dead load okay, for this uh, beam. So including the uh, soft weight. So we have a live load of 29.2 kilonewtons per meter and a dead load of 14.6. Okay, again, so we have uh, the length of the beam or this the unbraced length is equal to uh, 6.1 uh, meters. So it's a live load is equal to 29.2 uh, kilonewtons per uh, meter. And the, the total dead load this time is equal to, since okay, according to the problem, okay, the total dead load, it is not indicated that okay, the dead load includes the self weight of the beam. So we need to include the uh, self weight. So 14.6 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so this is 14.6 uh, plus okay, adding the self weight of the beam. Plus 0 point, uh, 70, uh, 7 kilonewtons per meter. So a total uniform dead load of, uh, this is 14.6 plus a uh, point 77. So we can have it as uh, 15 point, uh, 37 kilonewtons per uh, meter. So let's have okay, the ultimate uniform load to be carried by the beam. That is our W sub U equal to 1.2 of the dead load plus okay, 1.6 of the uh, live load. So our W sub U is equal to okay, 1.2 of 15.37 uh, uh, plus okay, the 1.6 of 29.2. Uh, uh, so ultimate load, uh, ultimate uniform load. This is 1.2 of 15.37 uh, uh, plus the 1.6 of uh, 29.2. That is equal to, uh, it should be 1.2, not 12. Uh, so we have that as 65.164. Uh, 65.164 kilonewtons per uh, meter. Now for the ultimate moment, since it is uniformly distributed load, then I simply supported our MU will be equal to the WU L squared divided by uh, 8. So this is equal to 65.164. The length is 6.1 squared then divided by, uh, divided by 8. So this is the actual ultimate moment to be carried by uh, the beam. Then we compare it later to the capacity. So 65.164 multiplied by 6.1 squared, I did then to be divided by uh, 8. So we have that as 303.09. So 303.09 kilonewton a meter. So if we are to compare this uh, value to the capacity, what is the capacity of our chosen uh, or selected section? That is 313.14 kilonewton meter. Okay, so that is, okay, so this value, uh, this is the actual, actual moment, and this is a uh, less than, okay, our MU, we have that as uh, 313.14, is that correct? Uh, let us just check. So 313.14 uh, okay, kilonewton a meter. So this is the okay, moment capacity, or the design strength. So the actual is less than the capacity. Therefore, uh, we can uh, conclude that uh, the W uh, 12 by uh, 53 is adequate for LRFD.
So under LRFD, the W12 by 53 uh, section is adequate. Then we need to check this one okay, under uh, ASD. So for ASD, I will be having the allowable uniform load. So our uh, allowable uniform load will be simply the total dead load plus the okay, live load. So we have WA is equal to our total live load is equal to our dead load is equal to 15.37 plus okay, the live load is equal to a plus uh, the live load, 29.2. Uh, uh, so the allowable uniform load is equal to, okay, this is 15.37 uh, okay, plus 29.2. Uh, uh, okay, and that is equal to, okay, we have 44.57 uh, kilonewtons per uh, meter. Then we have its, okay, supposedly allowable uh, moment, actual moment. Okay, that is equal to, uh, the same, we have WA times L squared to be divided by uh, 8. And this is equal to 44.57, then multiplied by 6.1 squared okay, divided by 8. So we have, okay, we have MA or M sub A is so equal to okay, 44.57 times 6.1 squared, okay, then divided by 8. So we have that as 207. Okay, 207.306 uh, uh, or let's say 0.31 so 207.31 uh, a kilonewton a uh, meter if we are to compare that value okay, to the capacity of our uh, section that is 208.35 so this uh, value, this is uh, the actual allowable moment, is basically less than our uh, MA capacity, that is 208.35 kilonewton a meter. So slightly, slightly gray, uh, higher compared to this actual value. Again, this is the uh, capacity. Okay, so this is, uh, if, you are to, uh, cons if you are to conclude, Okay, the W, uh, 12 by uh, 53, is adequate. Okay, so under uh, ASD, the W12 by 53 is, okay, W12 by 63, uh, W12 by 53 is adequate. Okay, so this will be our solution, okay, for this example.